Another episode of Next Talks, and today we speak with Patrick Markt Niederreiter, who is the head of digital excellence Europe from the EG uh, Sankyo. Patrick, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today, Dario. My pleasure. And let's deep dive into our conversation. We prepared some very tough questions for you today, uh, a mix between leadership and, of course, personal questions. And my first, which I would like to ask you, is. Patrick, how do you maintain to be such calm and positive person in such fast-moving environment, especially nowadays when we have COVID? Very good question, Dario. So what I actually try to do is to remind myself of my personal guardrails. Yeah? So um, I have three of them. Yeah? One is actually always try to achieve clarity on what the business purpose is. So what are we trying to achieve with a project, a product development, or by offering a service? And let me also give you an example. Yeah? Currently, we think about, should we you know, provide a companion app? So rather easy solution, adherence, quality of life. Should we think about developing a platform or digital twin? Because a lot of the discussions are really mixed and then people get stressed because they don't feel what should be done. But by focusing again and again on saying what we're trying to achieve, it helps a lot. So I think most people know it's an open secret. This is important, but I think doing it is very difficult and being, you know, really focusing on it. The second thing I usually do is focus on the customer and the user perspective. So what's in for medical doctors or patients and us? And let me again make an example. When we talk about a companion app, so yes, there might be a fantastic value for patients, but why should HCPs use it if they need to access, again, a different website? So, you know, put yourself in the shoes of the doctor. What would it need for the field force? So would it be easy for them to promote the app? Are they the right persons? Would they accept someone else, you know, doing a co-visit, supporting the conversation with the doctor? Yes or no? So the better I think you can anticipate what's important for the different stakeholders, the easier it gets and the less you need to be stressed because you don't anticipate, you actually talk to them and ask them. And the last thing is, it takes time, yeah? Just relax, you don't have to save the world today, actually. So <clears throat> my personal learning is a big change requires three to five years to fully kick in because you discover a lot of white spots yeah? and you can neither tackle all of them simultaneously nor can you always fully plan what you're actually trying to achieve, so the desired state. It's really a test and learn approach. Like we hire a team for our digital innovation hub. We adapt processes like training, how people might be incentivized, which support from IT and legal needs to come. And if you tackle it topic by topic and say, okay, we do as fast as we can, but they don't need to be a deadline by saying at the end of the month, legal must provide something, then it becomes much more easy because you are relaxed, your team is relaxed, and they know it is important to be done, but we cannot do everything within the next weeks. And by focusing on these three key aspects, my personal guardrails, people see I'm very consistent in what I'm doing. I fully believe in these guardrails, and this then also helps them to trust me and to trust in the decisions we made to actually say this is the right thing to do. Patrick really believes in what he's doing, so let's give it a try. Thanks a lot. Very interesting answer. Would we'll say like mindfulness in business. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Next one. What are your leadership principles and how were those shaped through the years? Yeah. So my num I have again three. Yeah, so it's <laughs> you see I like the the number three. Um, so my number one rule is really people always first. So what do I mean with this? So it means. If I have a meeting or someone would like to talk to me, I always um, talk to the person yeah? because I always assume it's really important if a person, a person approaches me. Um, I also you know, say the interest of the other person is more important than myself. It's just my time or even if I'm not happy about it, it doesn't matter because people approach me for a reason. And the reason why this is my number one rule is basically because I made a different experience. And this showed me really how important it is that you are approachable 
you not only talk about the open door policy, but you really act as a role model by saying whatever the topic is, whether it's business, private or whatever you decide, but you should know you can always approach me. It doesn't matter whether I'm busy, maybe I need a few minutes to reschedule and then we do it. And my experience is people also respect your time. You know, they don't approach you all the time. They really say, okay, if it's urgent, I try to do it. But what would Patrick say if we talk? And this is very interesting because then people say, Patrick would say, reflect, like on my personal guardrails. Have I considered what's in for the customer? How much time it takes? And do I really have to ask him to get the answer? Have you considered these three principles? And this is what I really like that people see you're authentic, you're approachable. Um, this is why this is my most important rule. The second one is treat everybody with equal respect. So um, I started this long time ago, independent of any discussion of diversity or inclusion. I really have the feeling, you know, everybody tries his or her best. So this is why you should treat everybody the same. Again, because I, I have experienced and observed different things, not in this company, but in other companies. And, you know, even apprentices talk. So the best thing you can do is if someone goes out there and say, you know, I have been an apprentice for three months, but you know, I really felt I was a team member. They listened, they considered what I said, and this is the best promotion you can get. And the last thing is listen and be proud of your own view. So it doesn't mean, you know, that everything can be aligned as a full consensus. So you definitely should listen, but you have, if you have a different view, express it openly because people will also see, okay, it's really about, let's call it friendly collision of ideas, because this is the seed for the solutions. Um, and in my experience, this also helped a lot because people know we don't have to agree all the time, but we have the opportunity to learn from each other. And this is why I said, listen and be proud of your own view. Thank you. Next one. The Japanese culture is very known for many great leadership styles. What did you implement it from those great Japanese advice? Yeah, it's, it's called uh, Nimawashi. <laughs> so it's actually very uh, a Japanese, um, let's say, leadership style. What it actually means is you try to lay the foundation for what you're trying to achieve in a very quiet way in the background. So let's say I try to set up um, an organizational structure for my team, um, which also needs exchange with legal and IT because we would like to avoid that the roles are redundant. Yeah? So how can we do this? This means I talk to the head of IT, I talk to the head of legal, I talk to the people who will be invited to the meeting to understand the concerns, to say, okay, this is actually what we can do. And then when you go into the meeting, actually everybody has aligned upfront, you know? And this has nothing to do with, you know, I wanna find full consensus. It's really respecting the view of people by saying, I don't want you to be surprised with something where you could say, this is unacceptable for me. And this is what I really like about this Nima Washi, that it's a lot about people, their opinion and their experience and how you can learn from it so that you can make a better decision. So this is actually what I practice, try to practice every day. Other people call it networking, but in Japan, this is Nima Washi. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Next one, greatest leadership moment you experienced so far? Uh, this is actually when I, maybe half a year ago or so, asked my team for feedback. So we do have some um, values and behaviors um, like trust, but what does trust mean? So it comes with behaviors. We constructively challenge each other and respect each other's view, just to give one example. And I said, you know, if you could take a look at the four values we have uh, and the behaviors associated with it, could you just please give me feedback and tell me how you feel I'm doing? Uh, because this is very important for me and this is the basis for everything we do. And what the people actually said were not, was not only limited to the feedback I got, where they said, you know, you, you walk the talk. A lot of things which are taught in leadership trainings or what is actually written in our behaviors, we observe. It's about empathy, active listening, asking questions, you're mentoring, you're really empowering us. So you're not telling me what to do. But on top of that, and this is what I did not expect at all is, they say, what I always wanted to say to you, I joined the company because of you. Yeah? Or you were the first one who helped me to outgrow myself. I always had this, let's say, um, area of improvement, 
but you never gave up. You talked about it in different ways, in different occasions, so that I really understood why you believe it could help me, what you believe would be the options and made me reflect to find my way to actually tackle it. And this is where I was really, really proud because um, people were very honest. Of course, it was also positive feedback, but what really was heartwarming is that they um, basically said, you know, I'm one of the reasons why they get up every day and like to work for the company. Very inspiring. Thank you, Patrick. And let's move forward to the best part from our opinion, which is quick fire questions. First one, favorite German yes. product and famous person from Germany. So favorite German product is meatballs. So I really like oh, them. Right. <laughs> and favorite person, I was really thinking about who it could be, but actually I was not able to come up with one. You might be disappointed, but I don't have a favorite German person, to be honest. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, tell us who is Patrick in private? Um, the same person you're talking to, or my colleagues, or my wife, or strangers. So I, I really don't make a difference. I always behave the same way, like with these guiding principles, um, so that people don't have the feeling this is the business Patrick or uh, a different version of Patrick. And again, this is important for me because first, people know who they deal with. And second, I can always remain myself. So I don't have to act or focus on which Patrick do I need to be today. So there's only one Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 there's only one Patrick behaving always uh, the same, really trying to listen to others and um, doing something which makes a difference. Fantastic. Uh, since you are currently in Munich, I would like to ask what's the greatest Bayern Munich player currently for you? That's definitely Oliver Kahn. So uh, the goalkeeper uh, Bayern Munich had until um, some time ago. One of the greatest one, for sure. Can completely agree with you. Yeah. Uh, first thing you will do when we go back to normal or some way of normal? Yeah. Uh, travel, but not alone uh, with my daughter. I have a small daughter and I would really like to start to show her the beauty of the world. So this is one together with my wife. This is really what I'm looking forward to very much. Hopefully this will be very soon, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, Patrick, thanks a lot. It was really very inspiring to speak with you. And uh, hopefully we see each other also on our live event in May in Dubrovnik. So looking to that and uh, take very good care. It was a really great pleasure. Thank you very much again for having me, Dario. Have a great day and look forward to speak to you soon again. Bye. Bye, take care.